Hi folks, I'm Greg Basco of Deep Green Photography, and I'm here today packing for a trip to Chile, where I'm gonna do a photo workshop with a nice group of clients over the next couple of weeks. And I'm gonna pack all my gear in the really nice Pelican Air 1535 rolling carry-on case. You know, air travel is getting increasingly crazy for photographers, and we're always worried about that, that last option, that worst case scenario where we'd, we would have to check our gear. Now, I don't wanna do it, but if I absolutely had to, I'd like to have an option where I'm pretty safe and secure that my gear is going to arrive in one piece, or at least as many pieces as it had when I packed it up. And this is a really nice option for that, and I also like the peace of mind when I'm in the field. I might be throwing my camera bags into the back of a pickup truck, into a boat, in a van that's bouncing around on a bumpy road, and, you know, padded backpacks are nice, but they don't compare to the security of a hard case like this. So I'm gonna go through what I'm packing for Chile, and all this stuff you see on the table in front of me is gonna go in here, and I'm gonna be good to go, and toward the end of the video, I'm gonna highlight some of the features that I really like about the Pelican Air. Now, I bought the Pelican Air empty. You can buy it with some padded dividers, with a system called Trek Pack, or with foam, and all of those kind of limit you as far as how you can pack, and they also cost a lot more. This cost $187.50, just like this, and so I'm gonna pack it using a jacket and some neoprene pouches and sleeves that I have, and all the gear will go in there nice and snug, and I think it'll be just fine. If I wanted to, I have laying around from different camera backpacks and bags, lots of little padded dividers with Velcro that I could uh, make my own little system for when I want to. But in this case, this is how I'm gonna pack for Chile. And I packed just this way a couple of months ago for Ecuador, where I was doing a project with uh, my new NGO, my new nonprofit group that I founded with some photographer friends called the New World Conservation Photography Group. And I packed the same way, a little different gear because it was a different kind of shoot. Uh, but it worked really well and I enjoyed it. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to pack a Polar Tech jacket. This is, uh, has the logo of my photo tour company, Photo Verde Tours. And so I'm gonna pack that in here, take advantage of the fact that I get to pack a jacket. Okay, so that's the first thing that's gonna go when I start to pack, and that's just gonna be the bottom layer kind of, of, of insulation and padding, okay? Um, what else do I have? I have a little camo um, ground cover that that's going to go on top to pad things further right at the end just in case but let's go through my main gear I have a Canon 7D2 body with a grip I have a Canon 5DS R my main camera body which I love I have the great Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter uh, contemporary zoom lens fantastic you can check out a review uh, right on this blog of that lens and I'd like to thank Sigma for that. They're always nice to me and I love their gear. They're making some really, really great lenses now. I have a Sigma 15 millimeter fisheye lens, just for fun, f2.8. That's nice. What else do I have? I have a Rokinon 24 millimeter f1.4 lens, which is really nice for some night stuff that we're gonna do in Patagonia in Chile and also in the Atacama Desert where the stars are amazing. And then I have a 16 to 35 millimeter F4 LIS Canon zoom lens, which is my favorite landscape lens. It's just great. And I have a polarizing filter on here, which I usually use for landscapes. I've got some filters here, a filter holder for a graduated neutral density, a couple of different neutral density filters. And I also have some colored gels for flashes in here. I also have here the Godox AD200 uh, flash, which is really cool. It's got the power of a studio strobe, but in a much smaller package than a normal studio strobe, even though it's bigger than your standard speed light. But it's really cool, and I'm going to be doing a gear review on that uh, within the next couple of months. But I'm excited about using that uh, with a big softbox for maybe some different sorts of landscape things uh, out in the desert and maybe even in the, in the Patagonia area. That's going to be fun. What else do I have? I have this uh, Benro panning clamp which is really great for panoramic photography. And I also have a, re a review on, of that on my Deep Green Photography blog. That's nice. I have uh, these little padded cases by eBags, which I really like for packing accessories. This is a little LED light for video. And I'll also pack uh, the little microphone system I'm using right now for this video. I'll pack that in there uh, just for some video stuff I might do out in the field. I have a couple of battery chargers, a spare battery or two. 
a little gorilla pod and a phone thing uh, to clip on if I want to do a quick video or a time lapse or something like that with my phone. I also uh, have a silica gel pack in here. These are reusable ones. I probably won't need it too much in the Atacama Desert in Chile, but it's something I always throw in since I work mostly in the rainforest. Some other accessories. I've got just a standard cable release, an off-camera flash cord, you never know, little card case holder, and a little bit of gaffer's tape, always useful. I've got the Velo FreeWave wireless remote, which is really nice. So I can plug this into the camera and shoot whether I'm 50 feet away, 100 yards away or whatever and take pictures. I've also got this new Case Air remote that I've just bought and I'll be doing a gear review on that at some point in the future. But it allows you to control any camera wirelessly, even if the camera doesn't have Wi-Fi. And so you can change things like focus and aperture and all your settings. Really nice for some wildlife setups that, that I'm going to try to do over the next few months. And I think that's everything. So let's take a little break and I'm going to start packing this all into the Pelican Air 1535 case. So there we go. Uh, that's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, it's a pretty good fit. And the last thing I'll do is put this little ground cover I mentioned earlier, which is nice to have in the field on there. Snap it down. The latches are tight, which they should be. But there we go. And I'll put a couple of little locks on here. TSA approved little locks just in case. My combination is 111 in case you see me at the airport or not. Don't look. Okay. And there we go. I'm ready to head to the airport. Um, a few features I like of this, this uh, Pelican Air, they've reduced the weight by I think about 30 or 40 percent over the previous version of this case. It's still not super light. Uh, but it's not too bad and you can still get a lot of gear in there. It's totally carry-on legal up to basically the maximum size for any normal air travel as long as you're not in a, a little tiny regional jet in the US or, or a bush plane or something like that. You're going to be good with this. They've sized it to make it just as big as they could inside as possible. The interior dimensions are similar to like a think tank rolling bag or something like that. And um, you know it's nice. It has a little business card holder. Uh, it has these hasps for the locks and it has a little pressure release valve. And then, you know, the nice thing is that it's a rolling bag. So once I get to the airport, I'm ready to go. And why not? I pull it down and obviously it's well made to Pelican standards. So it'll last a lifetime. That's their guarantee. And I think it's a great option for the traveling photographer. Now, when I get to my destination, I'm not going to want to haul this around in the forest or in the desert or wherever I'm shooting, of course, right? So I'm going to take a smaller photo backpack with me or maybe a belt system, depending on what I'm doing, for kind of my daily shooting uh, for, for each given thing that I'm, going to, that I'm going to shoot, right? For a morning or an afternoon or whatever, I'll gear up with a, a more portable system for the field to do that. But for getting around the airport, and like I said, for traveling even in country on dusty roads and pickup trucks and in boats and all the things we nature photographers go through, this is a really nice way to have my gear protected. And again, 
have a little peace of mind if I happen to face that worst case scenario for the photographer where I have to check my gear. Now I should mention one other thing I do. In my second carry-on, you know, my smaller laptop uh, personal bag, I'll throw in a little folding uh, backpack. And if I had to check things, I'd probably throw a few things in that folding backpack, uh, lenses and cameras, since they're in the neoprene sleeves, and place those carefully in the seat in front of me and send the Pelican through, maybe with a few odds and ends, or emptier, right? So, I, so I'd, still, I'd still try to not send my gear through, but in the last case where I absolutely had to, this is a great option, and like I said, for under $200, is a really, really nice secure rolling case. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video gear review on the Deep Green Photography blog, and I'll catch you next time.